this thing, this average value, looking at average value of a function. Uh, this first part here just talks about how you've learned how to find the average before. If you ask someone how do you find the average of a bunch of numbers, people will tell you add them all up together and divide by how many there are. Right? Like if, if you have six people and they have a di bunch of different amounts of money, okay, somebody has $10, somebody has $2, somebody has $100, somebody has uh, $12. Let's leave it like that. And you're saying, let's leave four people. If you're saying, what's the average amount of money? It's like you're collecting all of this money together, right? You're putting it all together here, piling it all together, and equally distributing it amongst the four people, right? That's what an average is. That's a better way to think about averages. You're collecting it all together and then redistributing it. All together, that gives you a hundred and how much? Oh, why is it going to do this again? So if you equally distribute that to everybody, they get what? Thirty. One dollars. That's communism. Uh, it may be, but uh, it uh, equally distributing it to everybody. Everybody gets thirty-one dollars. The problem here is that we want to know what the average value of this function is, but we don't have a discrete number. Here we have four people, individual people. Here you don't have a certain number of numbers, right? You have an infinite number of numbers in between there and there. So it's hard to say how do you equally distribute all of that value. I think you'll probably agree if I draw a few different functions here. First, the way the function's drawn now, if you think about, well, I don't know, what's the average height? It's at 2, and then it kind of hits 3 here, and it eventually goes up to 5. You probably agree that you don't, like if it was a straight line like this, you'd probably say, what's the average height? It's probably halfway between, right? But this one, since it's lower than that for most of the time, if not all the time, the average height's probably lower than that, right? Or if, if the curve went like this, how would that change the average height? The average height wouldn't be down under three. It would be way up here somewhere, right? When the curve is higher more of the time, the average is going to be higher. And when the curve is lower, this is going to be a lower average. So how do you work out the average? You, you do it exactly the same way as you do here. You take the total and you spread it out equally amongst all of the all the people, except here the people are, there's an infinite number of people. Remember back to when you did rectangles? Because with rectangles you could do it. If you had five rectangles here, just drawing them hopefully quickly. Um, if you, whoa, that one's a little bit of a problem. Um, if you, that one's a little low too. I'm not hopeless here, well, it looks like I am, but... If you equally distributed those five rectangles, you would probably agree because now you've turned it into something discrete, right? You'd take a chunk of this person who has the most money and give it to some of the other people here. And you'd make them so all the rectangles had the same height. Or then you could make 10 rectangles and do the same thing. Or 100 rectangles or 1,000. What you are basically doing is you're taking all of this area because that's what the rectangles are estimating. You're taking all the area and equally distributing it. The best analogy I have for you is pretend that this was a, a glass full of sand or something like that. Because if it was liquid, it would automatically level out. But if it was sand, it might be higher on one side of the glass than the other side. And if you took it and shook the thing, all the sand would level out somewhere here. And it would probably level out, I don't know, there maybe. Does that seem like a reasonable average height? Because you got some up here. I mean, obviously, this is a two-dimensional picture, and a glass of sand would be three-dimensional. But all of that sand would end up over here and level it out, right? So somewhere there's somewhere there's a point here where that area is going to balance out that area, no matter how the function's drawn. That's the average value. Taking the area here and then spreading it out equally. So what you're saying then is if you know that area, if you know the area of the yellow thing was... I don't know what it is here, but let's pretend it's uh, 14 or something like that. No, let's not. Let's pretend it's 15 because then it divides nicely. And this interval is 5. If I spread it out equally, what's a rectangle with an equivalent area to that? If it was 15, well, that's 5 here and 3, right? The average height would have to be 3. Okay, so the formula here, um, how can you find the average height exactly? You need to know that area, and the area is, I'm going to write it down here even though 
you can uh, you can write it on the next page, but I want to be able to see the picture at the same time. Oh, but look, I have a picture already of that on the next thing here. So I'm going to redraw it. Let's say this is it. So if you know the blue area is 15, let's say, or all right, right there, if uh, that area represents integral from a to b, right? A to b of that function. That's just the area. So let's, okay, this is that area. What do we need to do with that to come up with this average height here? Well, if I'm spreading it equally over that, I'm dividing it, right? I'm dividing it by five. So I'm dividing it by the width of the interval. If I divide that by b minus a, that's the average value. Okay, the interval that this happened was b minus a or six minus one, it's five in that case, right? The average, the average there is 15 divided by three, it's five, right? Or in other words, it's integral from one to six of f of x dx. Now you could say divided by there, or you can say times one over. A lot of people don't like to go divided by six minus one, so they say instead, they uh, instead of doing this, they put this over the side, right? Which I'm sure you're fine with. Put this over here. And you say one over that times that. Okay, one over that times that. One over six minus one. Okay, in general, then. In general, that average value f average is going to be the area a to b of f of x, okay, integral from a to b of f of x, just divided by the width of the interval. Okay, and just think again, the shaking the glass of sand thing, that sand fills in this hole over here and it makes it equal. Okay, now the second part of this where the picture, that same picture comes up again, is uh, this mean value theorem for integrals. Okay, which, let me stop this first so that it's two separate things. 